My grandfather is full of stories, but he has rarely told them. He served in the Navy for eight years around the time of the Korean War. He was also quite the photographer back then, too. He's made hundreds of slides from his photographs. Many of them haven't been viewed in over 50 years. When he brought up these slides and offered them to me, I knew I had to take this chance to find out more about who my grandfather was. It's all together, and I said, wow, you know, I got these metal cases with all yeah. these, these trips to Italy and Rome and places like that. And, you know, what good are they going to do me? I mean, My grandfather continues to go on about how he doesn't know what to do with these slides and goes on to explain how the slides have been sealed and how he wants to give them to me in order to see what I could do with them. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how many I have, but... I used to take and, well, when you take and get these things back from from Kodak back in those days, they were, they were you know, a 35 millimeter uh, uh, image. Mm -hmm. And they were in this, in this, uh, it was like a pasteboard. Uh, yeah, a slide holder. Thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. a holder. And then I took a lot of those out of that pasteboard holder and I took and I put them in between two pieces of glass mm -hmm. and then it had a, a metal thing and after you got it mounted in there after taking it out of the, the, the Kodak thing mm -hmm. you, you took and you ran this thing across there and it sealed it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them are in glass, mm -hmm. you know. And I thought to myself, well, you know, it would be kind of interesting if I turned them over to this guy. You know, I'm sure he'd be able to do something with them. Probably. Yeah? Yeah. My grandfather finally agrees to let me have a look and see what I can do with his slides and brings out one of his many slide cases. Now these, these here aren't any of the ones that I was talking about mm. that I had mounted, but you see what I mean? Yeah. And I have them, I have them kind of categorized. I see that. And uh, all of these here, but I've got a bunch of these that are, are mounted in these glass pieces like this. Mm -hmm. See that that's the way we used to take and get those things. Yeah. From from Kodak. I don't know if you even Yeah, know. no, I I <laughs> even it's so old even the rubber, rubber bands are dying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to successfully scan all 215 of the slides contained in that box, but due to health issues and the nearing deadline of this project, I was not able to meet with my grandfather to discuss the slides. So instead, I will leave you with the story he told my mother during dinner about how he wooed my grandmother after he was discharged from the Navy. The office manager was the guy that did the hiring, unlike when I... Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> so anyway, I, I talked to him and he said, uh, are you working right now? And he says, yeah. He says, I got a job over at Point Spring. Well, every year in July, Point Sporting Goods used to get a carload. Can you imagine how much ammunition? Okay, and a carload? Uh, one big box car wow. of ammunition, shotgun shells, you know, rifle shells, a little bit. And these guys that I was working with, they were telling me, they says, geez, he says, when do we get this? He says, you're just, you're just going to, I mean, you're going to work yourself to the bone. They take and they, they would bring that, that car in on a siding Sioux line, you know, mm -hmm. they'd bring that in over there on a siding right over by the west side bridge mm -hmm. on that siding over there. 
and there was a there was a railroad track that came by the mill, but it wasn't that close to the mill. But it, it was a ways away. And then uh, Port Point Sporting uh, Sporting Goods they would take in and hire a truck. They didn't have a truck, and they would take and they'd come. And the guys from that were picking orders, you went into the box car and you unloaded that thing. Well, at the time when I put in my application, I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just kind of worked in my favor. And so Ledger Karstetter said, can you start on Monday? I looked to him and maybe this was Monday or Tuesday when I put in my application. <laughs> he says, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about this two-week <laughs> stuff, and by that time I had already made up my mind putting sporting goods in way. <clears throat> so I went, <laughs> I went over there and I, I told uh, Hubbard, I said, uh, I put my application in over at the mill, and I think I told him what about on, I think it was on Thursday, <laughs> or Friday and Saturday, <laughs> all the two or three days notice. Oh man, I'm telling you, he just went through the roof. He was a very, very loyal employee of Point, Point Sporting Goods. But I, like I said, I thought to myself, you know, I could I could take and be here for 15 years before I ever get a chance at going out on the road and selling, you know, because they only had three salesmen at mm -hmm. that time. And one of them was a neighbor of mine uh, on Union Street, uh, John Joseph. And he had worked for him for many, many years. And then there was uh, uh, that guy I bought the... 49 Ford <laughs> that was <laughs> run down to its bare bones. But anyway, uh, yeah, no way. So then I went over to the mill and it's, I started in, uh, I started there in, uh, I think it was in, in August of uh, 56. Yeah. 56. And, uh, oh man, I'm telling you, Karstetter, or not Karstetter, but uh, Hubbard, Hubbard, he could have hung me. <laughs> uh, man, he was, he was really, oh. and, uh, well, hey, you know, here I'm a young guy, I'm out of service now, you know, looking toward the future, and now I've got this little sweetie over here I'm looking at, and I mean, you know, she isn't going to want to be eaten out of a cracker, a cracker box, so, I mean. What was that? <laughs> you don't have to know that. <laughs> I didn't hear it. <laughs> Because you didn't think I was going to live on a cracker box. Yeah, you, yeah, you got it right. Eat out of a cracker box. Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and at that time, I didn't know whether, you know, she was going to. And I was going to look uh, at you twice. Yeah. So. yeah. But we, after, I think, three and a half years, you <laughs> finally said, she was probably thinking to herself, is this guy ever going to get serious? <laughs> but like I said, I was having too much fun bowling four nights a week. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> well, when I got into the mill, I couldn't do that because I was breaking shifts. But I still, I think I was still bowling about two or three nights a week. <laughs> kids, huh? Uh, yeah.